like the two, two and one. <laughs> All the action, by the way, came in on the river Sorry. pretty much. My heart is still alive. There was a bet and a call on the turn. The, whole damn stream. <laughs> the river went check, bet, check, raise, three bet. Pots just under 44,000. All the action did indeed come in on the river, and we are going to look at a doozy of a hand that was recently played on the Hustler Casino live stream in this big, big anti-game. And because everybody loves these blackout hands, we are going to black out the hands and play out of Alec Torelli's spot, who's been recently playing on the show quite a bit. And another guy that's been doing really well, who's become a regular on the show, Henry. Henry happens to have the best name in the world as well. And this particular hand is going to start off with a straddle from Mariano to 200. So Henry's going to bring it in here for 500, a little bit larger than normal. Torelli in the middle blind is going to call here with black eights. And we are going to go to the flop heads up. Everyone's so boom. Alec Torelli, we're playing out of his spot with pocket eights. We flop bottom set. Obviously, the standard play here is to check over to the pre-flop razor. These guys are fairly deep. I mean, you want to try to get as much money in that you possibly can. But like sometimes will happen, it just gets a quick check check. Henry just checks behind here just instantly. And we get this queen here on the turn. So now Torelli here has a boat. Now, some of the things I'd be thinking about if I were Alec here is what Henry could have in this particular spot. Obviously, it's possible that Henry could be checking back a queen. He could also be checking back like a weak ace, something like that. I would probably expect him to bet off Broadway types of gut shots like King 10, King Jack. He could also have a hand like maybe like 10s, Jacks. But I do think that flush draws, Broadway gut shots would probably be doing a lot of betting. I also don't think that there would be much slow playing going on here if I were Henry either. I mean, Torelli called in the middle blind with Mariano to his left. So he's going to have something. He called basically 500 cold. That's the thing with this anti-game. So I would be betting off with a lot of my values like pocket aces, probably any set really. I, I don't know if I would have... Uh, necessarily a ton of slow plays here. So if I'm Alec, I, I want to try to get a little bit of money from some of the hands that check back, like maybe a weak ace. And, you know, maybe if I'm lucky, a queen, something like that. He ends up taking uh, about a two thirds pot size bet of a thousand, which I think is perfectly fine. Thousand into 1300. And Henry doesn't think about it for too long. And he's going to end up calling, and you just got to love this spot if, if you're Alec as we move to the river. So the river comes out the Jack of Spades, which obviously completes the front door flush. But again, I don't know how often Henry is really going to have a flush here without a seabed on the flop, like maybe once in a while, something like that. And... I don't know if I would get really tricky with this if I were Alec. I think I would still do probably a fair amount of betting. I think at this point, all sort of weak aces that decided to, say, uh, check back on the flop are probably going to check back now. If Henry had a queen, he probably would bet. So if you want to get tricky with it and just say, well, I'm going to check raise against a queen. The only issue there, though, too, is, is that you know, will a queen call your check raise? Because if we're check raising, we're looking like we probably have, you know, the minimum of a flush. So a lot of times in live poker, I don't get tricky with these spots. I want to try to get as much value as possible. And I, and I tend to bet. Now, obviously, this is high stakes. And these are two high level players. But for the most part, at sort of the mid to lower stakes levels, I'm going to bet and not sort of depend on my opponent for making a uh, thin value bet at the end that the way that this one went down so that I could get in a little tricky check raise. But that is not what Alec does. He does end up checking. And in this spot, if we're Alec, we're just praying that Henry is going to bet. And he obliges. He obliges. It just seems like sometimes when we get into these spots a lot, the opponent just checks back. And we're like, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Why did we do it? Right. So Henry goes 2,500 here into 3,300. So he bets fairly large. But as played, if we're Torelli, I think we absolutely have to raise here. Again, we are only really losing to higher boats. And I just don't think that 
pocket aces, pocket queens are going to be checking back the flop all that much. Now, there is the off chance that he might have run into jack-jack here, which makes a whole lot of sense, or maybe some queen jacks, but that can't stop us from raising here. I mean, this hand is just way, way too strong to just call. Like, oh, okay, like $2,500 bet, Ray, there's a raise. <laughs> So Alec decides to raise it up here to 10,500, just over 4X, right around a pot size bet. And at this point, you are just hoping that Henry is going to pay off with something, whether that is Queen X that check behind on the flop, or possibly some sort of flush that check behind as well. Or maybe, maybe if Henry was just going to get super, super curious and he's betting off an ace, you know, really hoping that he's going to make a, a super light call. But I don't think that you can really be concerned about getting re-raised all that much if Henry were to really come over the top, because there's just really only a few combos of hands that Henry's going to have that I think beat pocket eights at this point. And he's never really going to come back over the top for with a three bet, I don't think, with, uh, with a flush. Now, King 10 of spades is actually a royal flush, which is actually kind of something that's interesting that you also lose to. But you, you have to expect that that hand is going to really be bet off on the flop. Like, I, I think with a very, very high frequency. Is he looking to re-raise it? Wow. <laughs> a check rain from Torelli and now a three bet from Henry. Well... Obviously, we absolutely hate this spot if we are playing out of Alex's spot. I mean, we've check raised the river. I mean, the pot was so small. And now we see one of the strongest moves in all of poker, but especially live poker, getting three bet on the river. Like I said before, Henry is never going to be doing this with a flush that is not a royal flush. So really what he's representing is a higher boat. And again, I go back to on the flop here. I find it very unlikely that he is going to be slow playing, say, set of aces, a set of queens, or ace-queen. It is possible. Once in a while, you will see people slow play top set. But again, I go back to the fact that Alec called in the middle, 400 cold. He's going to have something. We would probably want to be building a pot with those types of hands. So I tend to dismiss those types of hands if I'm Alec. And that really leaves us kind of with like, we are losing to say pocket jacks or queen jack. Now, would Henry even three bet the river with jack jack? I think the answer is yes here, because I think that if I'm in Henry's spot, I think Alec might have some flushes that are played this way. And in reality, Alec's not going to have pocket queens, probably not going to have ace queen. He's probably going to three bet that off with Mariano being behind him. So really the only hand that you lose to when you look at the board is queen eight. Now Alec's not really playing that hand. So if I were Henry and I had Jack Jack, there's really not anything that we lose to maybe besides King 10 of spades. That might be the one hand that Alec kind of flats in this particular spot. So I think Henry does have Jack Jack here some of the time. And now it's back over to us. Henry just three bet to 30,000. It's 19,500 to call. So if we're playing out of Alec spots, we're getting just over two and a half to one. We have to be good here one out of three and a half times. But what are the bluffs here? That's the insane thing. It's like, what are the bluffs here? I mean, you sort start to look at this and it's kind of a newer school thing sometimes that I have seen that people have sort of taken from the PLO games to turn trips into a bluff on a flushing type of board or on a straightening type of board to try to get somebody off of a flush. I've seen it more and more over the last few years, it was a play that you almost never saw. We've actually seen it on Hustler Casino Live a few times. I actually saw Andy do it, I believe, to Garrett, and it worked on a pair of board. He turned his trips into a bluff, and he actually got Garrett off of the nut flush. There was a four flush type of run out. But it is just so few and far between that you ever really see a player do that. Besides that, maybe one time, usually in live poker you can really overfold rivers when extra bets go in, whether it's a single check raise or in this case, a three bet to a check raise. Now, sometimes you have to just sometimes just kind of revert back and be like, well, 
I mean, what's the best possible hand I can have here? So from an MDF perspective, Henry just put in an extra 22,000 and the pot was 16,000 before he put in the 22,000. So he's risking about pot and a half here at the end. MDF of course means minimum defense frequency. Alec probably needs to defend with somewhere in the low 40 percentiles of hands that he gets here with for MDF purposes. You know, if Henry had raised pot, Alex would, Alec would need to find like the top 50% because it's more than pot, probably the, the low 40s. But the thing here is, is that is this hand in the low 40s? I just don't know if Alec has any better hands here besides King 10 of spades because of preflop. And we can really logically look at this hand, I think, from a preflop perspective being in the middle blind. But the real question though is, does that matter? Does MDF matter in this particular case if these spots are so under bluffed? Can we just overfold? Can we basically fold absolutely everything here, leaning on our live experience in the fact that this is almost never ever a bluff? Wow, this is kind of a screwed up spot. I don't really beat anything. And I think the answer to that question is answer. it really depends on the skill level of your opponent and how aware he is of what is going on because Henry certainly knows that Al can't really have pocket aces, pocket queens, ace queen, or pocket jacks. So if he can get him to fold a flush, that's awesome. I don't, if he can get him to fold pocket eights, that's unbelievable. So it really, really comes down to how high you are playing in stakes and how good you think your opponent is. Nice, nice. Wow! Show the deuce. Show the deuce. Show the deuce. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh man. Oh man. And of course, Henry shows the deuce, and I'm sure Alec is gonna want that one back. I gotta tell you, I mean, it is a tough, tough spot, but. As you start to play against players that can properly hand read and that are capable, I think what we can learn from this particular hand is you might actually have to find the call button when you are so far up in your range. And as we talked about for MDF purposes, once again, somebody turning trips into a bluff. And I think in this particular case, it was Henry trying to get Alec off of a a flush, not necessarily a full house, but what a great hand. I will be at Hustler Casino Live commentating on Monday, February 13th for the All In Podcast game, and most likely I'll be playing on Tuesday night in this game, in this anti-game 5-5 with uh, 100 big blind anti.